Hello and welcome to Alchemy Fine Living. My name is Dina and I am one of the owners of this store located in Santa Ana, California. Here at Alchemy, my mom and I offer several useful services to make your home beautiful, such as upholstery, custom sewing of home decorative items like curtains, window coverings, and slip covers, and we also do furniture painting. In this video, I'm going to show you a little bit of each of those things. Upholstery and furniture painting will really transform the look of this chair. The first step in reupholstery is removing all of the old upholstery. This is the hardest part and the really dirty work. In order to do this, I would typically use some upholstery tools that are specifically made for removing nail heads and staples. But since most of you probably don't have those tools at home, I'll use some more common household items, a flathead screwdriver and a pair of dykes. You'll want to remove all of the fabric, nails, staples, and tacks, and try and get the wood frame as clean as you possibly can. Now that all of the old upholstery has been removed, I'm going to prepare the chair for paint. In order to do this, I'll sand the entire chair with 220 grit sandpaper. After I've thoroughly sanded the entire chair, I will then use TSP to thoroughly clean the chair. TSP is a cleaning product that comes in a powdered form. I'm going to dilute it in hot water, soak my rag in it, and then wipe down the chair and get it really nice and clean. Next, it's ready for paint. I will use a paintbrush to apply two layers of paint to this chair, allowing dry time between each coat. Once the paint is good and dry, I'll use a 100 grit sandpaper to sand the entire chair, paying special attention to the curved legs and the sharp detail. These edges are really easy to sand and remove the paint from, and it really makes these areas pop and stand out. Now the frame is ready for reupholstery. I'm going to recover this chair in burlap. Using the old fabric as a pattern, I will cut the burlap about an inch bigger than the previous fabric. The extra inch will get folded under where I'm going to staple it. It'll add strength to the burlap so I'm not stapling close to the edge where it may tend to fray and unravel. The old springs are still really tight. The jute, horsehair, and cotton batting are also in excellent condition, so I will be reusing all of these materials. Next, I'm gonna lay my burlap across the top of the seat. I've cut two slits in the fabric, that way it can be tucked in and go through the area where the back connects to the seat. Once I've got it in place, I'll cut two additional slits each about an inch away from the previous one. The slits are gonna be cut the width of the post that connects the back to the seat. That way the fabric can go around this area. The excess I will tuck under, that way I don't have a raw edge. Pulling the fabric taut, I will then staple on either side of the post. Folding under the excess and stapling the fabric as close to the lip of the frame as I can get it. Next, I'm going to turn the chair around and pull the fabric nice and tight. I'm going to staple it again, folding the fabric under and getting it very close to the lip. And I'm going to do this directly across from where I just placed staples on the back side. Then I'll turn the chair around and do the same process again close to the other post. Next, I'm going to place a staple on the center of each side and then I'll make my way around the entire chair, constantly checking to make sure that my fabric hasn't shifted and that the grain is still going nice and straight in the direction that I want it. In order to do the front corners that are directly above the legs, I'll need to create darts. I'll do this by first stapling in the very center directly above the leg. Then I'll start on the front of the chair, stapling towards that leg. Eventually, there will become excess fabric that excess fabric will get folded over, creating the dart.
There are several different ways that you can finish off this look. Nail head, gimp, or cording are good ways to hide the staples and make a clean finished edge on your upholstery. In this case, I'm going to use gimp and I'll use a hot glue gun to apply it to the chair. I'll start on the back side closest to one of the posts where the seam will be the least noticeable. Then I'll begin working my way around the entire chair, keeping the gimp very close to the edge. In areas where the gimp changes direction, I'll place a single staple, lay down some hot glue, and then fold the gimp under, creating a mitered edge. This is part one of a part two video. To see more on how this chair made its complete transformation, keep your eye out for my next video, soon to come.